In today's episode, I'm converting the front end of my wife's 2004 Chevy Suburban into the two-year only 2001 and 2002 Chevy 2500 HD front end, meaning the hood, the grill, and the bumper. Today on Challenge to Build, and please don't tell her more parts are coming off of this truck. She's gonna freak. That doesn't look good. Wow. That's interesting. You never know what you're gonna find. This definitely was in an accident. The last thing I have to do is take out these tow hooks, which after taking out three bolts, they should just slide out. The 2500 HD conversion captures 2001 and 2002. It was like a two year only option. It might've been 2000, 2000, 2001 and 2002. Um, it's a very sought after conversion. Uh, it definitely adds a very awesome aggressive styling to the truck and it's relatively all simply just bolt on stuff. Uh, except dropping the bumper down. I believe the conversion will fit the range of 2000 to 2006 Chevy trucks. So before you get involved in doing the conversion, do your research, read up on it. There's lots of information about it and just make sure that you are buying the right pieces for your swap. I can say it's nice to have a Sawzall that has multiple blade variations or locations, whatever you want to call it. Normally I'm impressed with Diablo blades and uh, 
not impressed with that one. I need the tip of it. Mostly. I already flattened out those teeth on the first cut. said this was going to be easy. For whatever reason, these Diablo blades are getting smoked really quick. I've never had that much of an issue with them. Come on, baby. It's this one freaking weld right at the top. This might give me a chance to cut this way now. Persistence pays off. So after ending the day yesterday by cutting the other uh, driver's side bumper horn off, I wanted to take a minute and show you some of the parts that are going to be needed. We're going to be the hood. This is a two-year only option with the big, what I call the bullnose hood. Uh, kind of resembles the old 70s, early 70s Chevy trucks. These parts can be found in the junkyard. They're getting harder to find, but you can also buy them in the aftermarket and they make kits for the whole conversion front end uh, along with the new bumper cap. This is like what makes the 2500 conversion happen because what has to happen in doing the conversion is the bumper has to drop and the bumper cap has a substantial um, difference in height on the ends and you can see this dish right here which accepts the dish in the grill. The bumper itself is the same. It's just the cap that changes and then we're going to drop the bumper. The grill, if you notice, it's hard to kind of notice on the floor, but the grill is extremely straight and flat on the bottom, whereas the 2500 dips down right here. It's kind of like a very subtle change in styling, but once all of the pieces are put on the truck and they all come together, it makes a huge impact on the exterior styling of the truck. The bumper is going to get reused and the top cap, um, you can find these in the junkyard, but most of the time they're kind of damaged. I found this on Amazon and there will, there will be a link in the description below. Um, I was actually extremely impressed with how well packaged this was. It took me almost like five minutes to get this thing unwrapped with how well it was packaged. So I was very happy to see that. One thing I can say about this is there are like these plastic fillers here that are going to rest on the bumper to kind of take up some of that dead space to keep this from collapsing down if anybody was to put their weight on it. So I was happy to see that. Um, the last cap I got was out of the junkyard and it did not have those. But those are the parts that you're going to need. And now it's time to get back to doing the conversion. 
I'm trying to remove the plastic clips on the bumper cap from the backside. It's just a matter of squeezing and pushing through. Uh, sometimes they'll break off, they're very brittle. Some of them are already broken. This truck had been in an accident <clears throat> before I bought it. So I am just gonna go for the easiest method and I'm not worried about saving it. So I'm actually just gonna twist some of them off to break them off. Also held in by these little plastic vent clips. Lots of plastic, plastic everywhere. There we go. So after making a quick decision, before I went ahead and put these bumper brackets on or these bumper horns, what I did was I ended up cleaning and coating the inside of the bumper with Cora Seal. This way here, I wouldn't have to look at rust. It would start doing its thing. It's pretty much dry, so I'm gonna continue on. Also, took the angle grinder and ground down the bumper horns and the frame rails where the bumper is going to be installed. This way here, once I get the bumper placed, I can go ahead and tack weld it and I won't have to worry about removing and replacing the bumper multiple times. We're going to put the bumper on. We also have to put the bump cap on to set the height and we're also going to put the grill in. So we're going to kind of put it together to just take it back apart for final assembly. So I'm going to finish this up and put the grill in. These are just quarter turn little plastic uh, retainer clips and they will snap off. Uh, very easily, especially if they are older and have been sunbaked. So remember, I pulled this grill out of the junkyard and it was kind of laying distorted where I found it. Thankfully, it was in pretty good condition, but it's going to take some time for it to come back to original state. So these, these clips and the bars, it's just fragile. And take your time putting the pins in. If it doesn't want to go, just a little finesse and it will go in where it's supposed to without any breakage. So we're definitely going to have to put the bumper cap on and we're also going to need to put the lower uh, turn signal parking light assemblies in. So this way here we can line the bottom of those assemblies up with the bumper cap. few tense moments, but it fits and it's tight and I don't think it's coming off again. So it's all right. The way I had a plan on finishing this off 
it won't need to come off again anyway. So it's got to come way up and in. I'm going to have to come up with an ingenious way to hold this up. I'm thinking maybe my jack and a block of wood to help me out. And uh, we'll continue battling the alignment until we can get these bumper horns tacked on. But making progress. So what I'm doing is there are these two plastic fillers down here that I want the bumper to go tighter in. And these filler pieces are keeping the cap from pushing in. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to remove them on both sides. Test fit the bumper again to see if I can get the bumper in a little bit farther. Because what I'm seeing is there's a big gap down here at the bottom of the grill. And it looks like the bumper still has room to move in. And then still line up with the wheel well opening. So still working on it. Uh, I will show you the process in which I'm using to lift the bumper and hold the bumper right now. Taking them plastic fillers off definitely help pull it in closer. So I'm happy with that. I just can't hold it. Actually, if it just stays there for a minute. See how bad I can botch this up. Are you ready? One man hood swap. Moment of no, no return. 
carefully, carefully. Little dab will do you. One, two, three. Ugh. All right, getting it on is going to be a little bit more tricky. I did a couple of things. Uh, one is I vice gripped the hinges down to about the area that I had them. And then I also sprayed the bolts with a little bit of WD-40 and hit the threads on the new hood as well. So this way here, it kind of lubes them up a little bit and should make things a little bit easier to get them back together. So now the tricky part is lifting the hood back on, setting the box up, and then aligning it to where I can at least get two bolts in and snugged up, and then we'll work on alignment. So wish me luck. One. That's two. Let's get a couple more threads in there. So now that all six bolts are in and semi snug or tight, post up in the comments how many thought I was gonna botch that up. I can say one thing, I broke a sweat. I'm hot. Here goes nothing. Are you telling me I got it on the first try? I don't know. It's looking pretty good. I can see that it's getting a little, the body seems getting a little fat down here. But again, that coincides with the body damage and the, fa and the fact that I had to pull this fender out a little bit today to match up with the bumper. So it's not terrible. And I just heard that the, the hood latch on its own. So. Little bit. Looks like it might need to go that way just a little bit. But I think I'm gonna snug it up. And then go for a shut. That went surprisingly well for a one-man show. Uh, I do have to loosen the bolts and push the, the hood toward the passenger side a little bit, specifically up on the back side. And then earlier today, this isn't lining up here. Earlier today, I broke off the hood 
bumper right here because I was trying to adjust it and that broke off. So that's going to create a problem in itself. But for now, it's not terrible. Once I push that over there, the fact that it went down and shut pretty much by itself, that is awesome. I uh, Unfortunately, I don't have a far enough distance away to get you a, f uh, a front shot, but I will, uh, I will show you as best as I can. So considering how much work was put in today, I am calling it quits for right now. We will pick it up tomorrow and start working on the left and right hand bumper brackets and look into what is involved in the tow hooks and adjust the hood. So it was a good day. That's the way to end a successful day right there. And uh, I'm gonna stand back and enjoy the hard work. So I will see you tomorrow. So it's a new day and I've been out here kind of tinkering with a few different uh, odds and ends that still need to be done on the truck. Uh, the first thing I did was I started uh, fixing the bumper stop for the hood. Uh, I snapped off the rusted bolt that was here uh, previously. And what I did was I just knocked out the old nut cert and replaced it with a new one and then uh, I epoxied uh, a bolt into the rubber stop, got it adjusted. Now everything, once the hood closes, I got everything relatively close on alignment on both sides. So I'm happy with that. Uh, the next thing that we're going to work on is the right and left hand bumper bracket. Uh, my original plan was to actually cut out the, the existing uh, bolt holes drop them down and then weld in a new piece of metal. But what I opted for was cutting a piece of plate, eighth inch plate, uh, drilling some holes for the two original bolts and then using nut certs for this, which allowed me to bolt everything together. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I went, ab went about making this piece real quick, tackle the other side. And last but not least, I will show you what is going on with the tow hooks and we will wrap up this build. I started with a piece of four inch by three inch eighth inch plate. And then what I did was I went ahead and used the bumper bracket as the guide for the holes. So I use that as a start point. Keep in mind, these are not pop rivets. The first time I went to go use this, I crimped it too hard. When you're using it, it feels like you're using a pop rivet gun, so you expect something to happen. That is not the case, so just squeeze carefully. It's a, it's a must have tool, I think, in the garage. If you don't have one, I will have a link in the description of this one that I'm using. And just like that, we have a custom mount plate for the bumper. Now it's time to go install it. So one thing to keep in mind too is when you're doing this kind of stuff, you're going to want to oversize the holes for 
up here where the mount is. This way here you can have some movement, uh, just like in body, body mounts and body bolts. Uh, normally they're like oblonged, so a little oversize in the hole isn't going to hurt you. A little bit of movement goes a long way. And then obviously keeping it loose this way here you can thread in the new ones once you get everything started And that is how I took care of the bumper bracket. So one of the last remaining steps that I wanted to talk about with the conversion was installing my tow hooks. And what I decided to do was if you compare the original tow hook right in this area here, I went ahead and trimmed it down. Here's a side to side comparison. And now what that allows me to do is I can slide the tow hook into the bottom of the frame rail and use factory mounting hardware and the one factory bolt location here on the bottom of the frame. And then what I'm going to have to do is once I remove the bumper off the front of the truck, I'm going to come in here and drill two new holes right below the old factory ones. And then I can use the tow hooks within the frame rail and not have to get crazy in doing any kind of modification with steel down below or make a new mount or completely drop the hook down to a, a location that wouldn't be very useful. So I still have to modify this one, but I am going to do that later on. I at least wanted to touch on how I went ahead or how I'm going to go ahead and finish the tow hook mount, letting you know that there is a pretty simple option. Depending on what platform you were working on will probably determine uh, how you finish the install with the tow hooks, and that's ultimately up to you anyway. Well, that wraps up today's video on the 2500 HD conversion on the 2004 Suburban. Keep in mind with your conversion on whatever vehicle that you are working on, uh, there is gonna be some differences within your applications. So keep that in mind as you're working through them. I wanted to kind of show you some of the pieces and some of the techniques I used to do the conversion on this. Uh, this one was definitely a lot different than my 1500 Silverado that I did. So it was um, an interesting change uh, that I wasn't expecting for this. Some of the links for the tools, parts, and pieces that I used for this truck will be in the description below. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes for this build uh, where we're going to start to address some paint and body issues as well. We are also working on uh, a leveling kit for the suspension and once we get the rear differential back from the rebuild we're going to be doing suspension blocks and finishing up this build uh, as a whole so stay tuned for all that if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell so that way you are going to be notified when i start to drop the episodes uh, my name is paul michael this is challenge to build now it's time for you to go out and challenge your build i will see you in an upcoming video